Hello children, welcome to part 4 of my Unreal Engine Crash Course. So, in this episode we're gonna create a nice, simple moving platform that will look something like this. And uh, we will have it move back and forth between a point that we can specify at a speed which we can specify. So, let's get right into it. Uh, before we do that, however, one more thing. Um, I want to fix the annoying issue that I brought up in an earlier part about actors disappearing when you place them, then play and then quit playing. So uh, let's just quickly fix that. If that is not an issue for you, uh, great, you can listen to me ramble for a minute or two. But uh, for those of you uh, that also have this issue, then just follow along. So, Window, World Settings. Brings up this menu here. Scroll down. Under World Partition Setup, check Enable Streaming. Yes, no, everything disappears, great. Uh, window again, World Partition Menu, World Partition Editor. This window appears, scroll out, right click and drag to move around, uh, left click and drag to select something, right click, load region from selection, close this, close this, and uh, now when we add something, uh, play, and then quit, it's still here. I don't know why this works, but it works. Uh, this is basically me using this program in a nutshell. I actually uh, figured out a while ago how this worked, and I posted my solution on the official Unreal Engine subreddit. So as you can see here, there's this uh, post, and uh, there's me um, explaining how it worked and how I solved it. So. Um, yeah, the Unreal Engine subreddit is a great place for either asking your question or if you've solved something, uh, telling others how you did it. Uh, because, you know, don't be that guy who just said, I fixed it and then doesn't explain how. Or girl. Um, but yeah, I actually used this to remind myself how I did it before. So yeah, I at least helped one person, that person being myself. And uh, at least someone else also thought it was useful. Another great resource would be the Unreal Engine forums. Uh, I also used those uh, in the past. Uh, kind of, you know, similar to the subreddit in the, in the vein that you can also ask questions and discuss stuff. But, you know, a bit more of a forum style. And uh, if this, uh, you know, if forums or subreddits are not really your thing, you can also join the Unreal Slackers um, Discord. And, uh, you know, ask questions there. They, there are lots of very active people, lots of people that are way smarter than me that can probably answer your questions better than I can in the comments here and quicker as well. And there's like a channel for pretty much, you know, every major system uh, the engine has. So you'll definitely get some answers there. So, uh, yeah, free great uh, resources, the subreddit, the forums, and Unreal Slackers Discord. So, uh, yeah, make use of those unless you want to suffer. That sounded threatening. Okay, uh, back to the editor. We are finally ready to create our moving platform actor. All right, so right-click in the content browser, yeah, go to platformer, right-click, blueprint class. We're going to use a simple actor as well. We don't need anything fancy. Call it BP underscore moving platform, like so. Save. Open it up. Drag the window once it has loaded. And we're going to add a component. We only need one for a platform. So this will be a cube. So let's call it platform. Um, R to scale. Scale it down on the Z axis. And then click here so both are highlighted. Then drag it out and let's say the dimensions are free, free and 0 0.25. You can also put them in here if you feel like it. So compile, save and let's drag it in here. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we can now stand on this platform. So uh, let's make it move. In the moving platform asset, go to the VA event graph. We can remove this and under event tick, we can drag out from here and call set actor location. So, and this will set uh, the actor's location as it says, and we can put in a location here. So basically what ticking is in Unreal Engine is, uh, you know, it's something that is called every frame if this actor ticks, which it does. 
And basically every frame, we kind of want to set the actor location to uh, be somewhat closer to our target location so that we can move it as smoothly as possible. Uh, but we actually need a target location. So add a variable, call it target location offset. And we need to change the type to be a vector so it represents a point in our world. Check this eye icon and compile. Now what we have is we have a variable which can be used to set the offset. And um, the reason we set this in here is uh, so that we can change it for the, for the platform and also so that we can change it individually for each platform because obviously not each platform should have the same target location. Uh, one more thing is to go in here and enable this 3D widget. And what this does is very useful. If we select a platform, we can also, we can now get this little thing. We can select it. It will be highlighted just a bit. And now we can move it around. And as you can see, the value changes accordingly. So now you can, now we can set the platform uh, location more easily and we can kind of visualize where it will be in the world. And the great thing about instance variables is, uh, I will explain a bit what, in a bit what instances are, but as you can see, this value is still 0, 0, 0. And if we change it to something else, then this value will remain at whatever we set it. So the values for each instance are different. Okay, but let's actually explain what instances are and how it, they relate to the classes we discussed last, last episode. So what a class is, is basically it's like a template, as I mentioned here. So let's uh, assume we have a car class, and the car has only one variable, color. Not very realistic, but it will do for our example. So basically the template defines, okay, cars have color. We might say, okay, the uh, default could be like... Blue. By default, cars are blue in our world. And you can say we have an instance of, of the car class, and this is an actual in-world object. Uh, so an actual car driving a down a road somewhere, and we say, you know, this car it should be red. We can do this. But it doesn't mean all cars have to be red, because we can have another instance of that car, and we can say, okay, this car should be yellow. I think that's yellow. And this is also an in-world object. And like our platforms, you know, they're two distinct objects. They're of the same class, but they can set a different uh, value for the variable color, just like we can set a different uh, value for the variable target location offset for both of our platforms. And you can have as many instances as you want, and uh, all of the va um, variables can be, um, you know, different. Um, you can, you can share variables between instances, but that's not important for what, we, uh, what we're discussing here. Okay, understood. Uh, let that sink in for a bit. Uh, let's go back and have another look at our platform variable. As you can see here, like uh, with the car example, this uh, instead of color, we have target location offset. And we can change it to, you know, whatever kind of vector we want. And here we can also change it, and these values are totally separate. But they are of the same type as is defined in the class here. It's a vector. And we can also set a default va value. So we can say maybe by default we want it to be 100 or something like that. And now when we uh, add a new platform, you can see by default it's a 100. If we change something and then revert it, it will revert to that default. So very useful. Okay, let's delete those two and go back to this. Okay, now we have a way to set the uh, target location for each platform individually. Now we actually need to, you know, move the platform from here to the target location and back. So we kind of need to also store where the platform is at the beginning of the game because we want to, you know, be able to move back to that point and we need to know where the platform started, uh, started out. So we will add another variable of the type vector, start location. And this will not be public because we will not be setting it in here. Instead, we will be setting it in the class. And basically, um, at the start of the game, we will set this variable. And we will just say get actor location this time around. Whatever the actor's location is at the start, this will be the start location. OK, we have the start location. We have the target location. Uh, let's actually add the movement code in. And once again, with Unreal, there are multiple ways to um, do this. But what we will be using is something called linear interpolation. So type in lerp, L-E-R-P, then go to vector. We can plug this in here. 
and we will plug some values in here and basically make our uh, platform move smoothly between two points. This first value will be the start location. The second value will be the target location offset. And this third value is something called an alpha. And allow me to explain what a LERP is. LERP stands for linear interpolation, which basically means uh, we get an alpha that's usually between 0 and 1. And basically, if the alpha is 0, then we say the, the return value should be A, so the start location. If the alpha is 1, then we say the return value should be the B, the target location offset. And if the value is something between 0 and 1, then it will basically blend between those two values. So in the viewport, 0 is here, 1 is here, and 0 0.5 would be somewhere in on this line between those two, so somewhere here. And for instance, 0 0.25 would be more towards the start location, and 0 0.75 would be more towards the target location. Um, I hope you understand what I mean. Um, you can also do LERPs for other stuff, uh, linear interpolations, as you can see, for floats and stuff like that. But the concept is the same. It's just different types that are being uh, linear inter linearly interpolated between. And you can see the description also says, uh, yeah, what, what this basically is. What we're basically going to do is we're going to increase the alpha value. And based on that, we're going to then plug this in here, make a new variable called alpha of type float compile. And we're basically, each tick, we're going to set this alpha uh, value. We're going to increment it. And then we're going to say, OK, let this alpha value basically drive the location of the platform, so where it will end up. OK, so we need to um, increment this alpha value. Uh, for now, let's say 0 0.002 each frame. It doesn't seem like much, but uh, as you can see, uh, this will make our platform move at a reasonable speed. Um, OK. So as you can see, if we press F1 to go wireframe, it just keeps moving. Not very good. And it also doesn't move towards our target location offset. So uh, multiple issues. Um, first, let's just uh, make the platform stop moving. So we want to keep the alpha value between 0 and 1. And for that, we can type in clamp, drag out from here, clamp, float. And what this basically does is, uh, let's move this a bit so it doesn't overlap. We want to keep this value between the min and the max. So between 0 and 1, which are conveniently typed in for us already. We could have custom values in here, but 0 and 1 is uh, perfect for us. So now we can see, um, if I enable wireframe again, the platform stops moving after a bit. But it's it's uh, it has stopped at what it thinks is the target location, which is uh, just right outside this wall. But that's not right. The target location is here, so it should move to this location. So what's the issue? OK, so I need to talk to you about world location and relative or local locations. Uh, not all vectors are created equal. Uh, some can mean different things. Um, let me just set that back to 0, 0, 0 and note where it ends up. So it thinks 0, 0, 0 is here. OK, uh, let's go to the actor and set its location to 0, 0, 0, and it ends up here. So uh, we just uh, set the actor to be at the world origin, basically the 0, 0, 0 point. And uh, what each location in Unreal just means, or you know, basically anywhere with vectors, is um, it just means the offset from the world origin point. So basically, this means, uh, let's say, the location of 1,500 and 100, uh, for simplicity's sake. So basic, this basically just means uh, uh, from the world origin point, which is here, we move the platform, you know, 1,000 units on the x-axis. So in this direction, then we move it 500 units on the y axis, and then we move it 100 on the z axis, and it will end up at this location described by this vector. And uh, same concept for this vector. So if we say, you know, 1000, then we move it 1000 on the x axis, 500 on the y axis, and 100 on the z axis. But here's the thing. Um, the origin points, uh, you know, that uh, these um, these locations move from, they're not the same. So for the actor, 
The origin point is the world origin. But for this variable, the origin point, 0, 0, 0, is the actor's location. So this means, unless the actor's location happens to be 0, 0, 0, this point, the, the 0, 500, 100, will have different local and world coordinates, because. So what this basically means is that um, the location described by um, 1500 and 100, that are point sets, uh, this point in world location isn't at 1500 and 100, because let's, let's memorize where this is, 1500 and 100 is over here in the world location. Um, the set actor location node basically thinks we mean thinks we mean a, a world location, but we actually uh, this actually means a local location. So once again, there are multiple ways to fix this, but uh, the way we will go about this is basically calculate where where this point um, is in the world location, and then we will move the actor towards this point instead of what's described in here. This is basically this based on the um, actor start location as well as, you know, this offset. This is all we need. And uh, can you think of one simple vector operation that achieves the desired effect? If you can't, that's fine. But if you might have an idea, then pause the video and see if you can figure it out how, how we can use the start location and the target location offset to basically get this point in the world, the, loca uh, the coordinates for this point. It's very simple, we just need um, vector addition. So we do the start location plus the target location offset equals the actual target location that we want to move to. Because first off we say, okay, we have this offset from the world, um, from, from the world origin point um, that's uh, described by this actor location. And then once again, we have another offset you know, described by the uh, target location offset from this point. So uh, to draw a little picture, here's the world origin point. You know, we have like a certain offset where our uh, platform is. And uh, then we have another offset where our uh, target location point is, indicated by this terribly crooked diamond. So what we can just do is say, you know, we add those two vectors together and then we get like this vector that points to this location from the world origin. And that's exactly what we want. So a simple addition and all of our problems are solved. Well, not all of them, but one of them. Okay, and uh, now when we play, we can see our platform is moving to this target location. Okay, great. It's not moving back yet, but that's okay. Um, there is, however, another issue, and it's with setting the alpha like this. Uh, right now, everything is fine. If I enable the FPS, you can see um, my computer can run this scene at 120 FPS, and this is what I've capped it at. Okay, that's good and all, but uh, let's go back. Let's um, make this a little bit faster for demonstration purposes. Uh, take note of the speed at which the platform moves to the target location. Okay, and uh, now let's limit our FPS to something like 30. It's getting choppy. Take note of the speed now. It is much, much slower. So we have just accidentally created a frame rate dependent logic in our game and uh, we don't want that because, you know, obviously our users are gonna play this at uh, different frame rates and we kinda want the experience to be the same, you know, regardless of frame rate. So we would like to make this frame rate independent. And the issue is, um, event tick is called every frame. So this means if your uh, game runs at 120 frames per second, then tick is called a lot more often per second than at 30 frames. And uh, this is an issue because let's say, you know, obviously if we um, move the tar if you move the platform by the same distance, you know, each frame, regardless of frame rate, then obviously if we have more frames, we move the platform further. And we don't want that. So basically, if we have more frame, we want the platform, each frame to move less. And if we have, uh, you know, less frames when each obviously want the
platform to move more. Basically, what we want is, uh, you know, in that time frame, we want the platform to move the same rate, um, you know, we want the platform to move the same rate over time, like uh, each second it should move this much, regardless of frame rate. And this is where something called delta seconds comes in, or delta time. This basically, um, you know, counts the amount of seconds, or more like milliseconds, hopefully, uh, that have elapsed since the last frame. If we just plug this in here and say, um, we want to move this um, based on the delta seconds, then we can see no matter what the frame rate is, at 30 it moves at this speed, and at 120, it moves this at this speed. Thank God the frame rate is moved again. So now our platform moves frame rate independently, but we still want it to move back and forth. We could do this in here, we could adjust, you know, we could add some logic to decrease the value if it has reached one, and uh, we could do it with some branches, but that's a bit complicated. So I want to introduce you to timelines. Type timeline, add timeline, Let's call ours location interp. Um, and double click it. Set this to one. I will explain what it does in a bit. Add a float track. We're going to call this alpha. Compile and save. So what this basically means, um, a timeline can be used to animate a value or multiple, but in this case one, you know, over the course of a certain amount of time, in this case one second. So basically over the course of one second, what we want to do is uh, set this value of alpha to go up to one, and at 0 0.5 seconds move back down to zero. And then we can basically say we want to play this timeline when the game starts, and whenever it updates, which will be each frame, we want to say we want to um, set the actor location. Now we didn't actually need this tick, we didn't actually need this, we don't even really need alpha. What we just need is um, the movement logic. So we can just plug this alpha value in here. We can get rid of this. We can even get rid of the variable if we want. And now um, we can say this alpha value now drives this movement. But the alpha value currently isn't being set. It's just being set to zero over the course of a second. Let's add some keyframes. Right click, add a key. Set the time and value to uh, zero. Add one more, right click, one, and also zero. Come on, okay. And right click once more, set the time to 0 0.5 and the value to one. So make it fit by clicking these buttons. And as you can see, now it may become more clear what we're doing here. So basically we say when the timeline starts or when the game starts, and the time is zero, the value will, of alpha will also be zero. And then we can say, you know, as uh, time goes on, this is also frame rate independent automatically, by the way. So after half a second has passed, our uh, value has smoothly, you know, increased to one, and then it should go back to zero. Uh, let's see that in game. So as you can see, it now moves back and forth. Okay, that's great. We just need to do a few more things. Um, we need to make this loop so when it reaches zero, it starts over again. So the platform, you know, moves back and forth indefinitely. And I'll also leave that as an exercise to you. Hold on. Ah, I don't want that. Um, we're going to move this. Hold on. We're going to move this a bit here. And now that we've created the timeline, we can also type in the timeline name. Get it and basically set some stuff with dragging out and typing set. We want to make this timeline loop. Can you figure out which function you need to call to make it loop and what which values you need to pass in? Uh, pause the video and try that out. We need to call set looping. Actually call this function and set it to be looping. So set this value to true. And now when we play, great, our platform is moving back and forth indefinitely. It's moving very quickly though, so uh, let's slow this down a bit. Once again, this is a value, uh, this is a variable we can, a function, I apologize, we can call. It's called set play rate, which will basically, you know, change the playback speed of the timeline. 
And what we want to do is um, we need to create a new variable called travel time, which will be a float. And we will also make this an instance because each platform should be able to travel at a different um, speed. Set the default uh, to like three seconds. And what this variable will basically mean is that the platform takes three seconds to complete one cycle. So 1.5 seconds to the target and 1.5 seconds back, three in total. If you change that to like five, then it takes or six maybe, then it takes three seconds to go to the target and three back. So six in total. That's what it will mean. And obviously each platform um, is supposed to have its own unique travel time so that we can also set them independently of each other. So, plat so each platform moves at an acceptable speed. The play rate isn't actually the travel time. If we plug this in and let's say the travel time is free, then the the timeline would, you know, play back at three times the speed, which is not what we want. We want to play? We want it to play back at one third of the speed. You know, if it takes, if it's supposed to take three seconds and it's one second by default, then we obviously want it to take three seconds when the travel time is free, and five if it's five and so on. So we can do this by dividing. Um, hold Control and drag this down here. Set this to one, then plug this in here instead. Now this will do is basically, uh, you know, if it's free, then it's one third, and the timeline will play back at one third of the speed, and which will cause it to, you know, take three seconds to finish one cycle. You can do the math yourself and see why this works. And now when we play, one, two, three, one, two, three, yeah, yeah, seems about right. You can measure it if you want, but you have my word, this will, this moves at three second intervals. Okay, great. Um, one last thing we can do is um, the platform kind of just, when it reaches the target location, it bounces right back and so on. We can move it a bit smoother by holding control, selecting all these keyframes, right clicking on anyone and selecting auto. And now, now it will kind of smoothly accelerate and decelerate the alpha. And uh, the result is apparent if we look in here. So as you can see now, before it reaches a target point, it kind of, you know, slows down and then speeds up again and then slows down. And you can see this uh, if you stand on it. So we have a moving platform. It moves smoothly. It functions just as we want it to, and we can customize it to um, whatever we desire. All right. So we learned a lot today in this episode. We learned about, you know, what instances are and, um, you know, how they relate to classes. We learned about instance variables, uh, how we can create them, how we can set them for each instance of a class. We learned about actor ticking and what it means. You know, we learned about how we can basically update uh, something while the game is running, like setting for setting the location. We learned how that works too. We learned uh, how we can create frame rate independent logic. We learned how we can interpolate between two vector variables and what interpolation even means. Uh, we learned about world location and local location and how they differ and, uh, uh, you know, why how we can use both. We learned about timelines and why they are useful. And yeah, now we used all this knowledge to create a moving platform. Whew. Okay, this was another jam-packed episode, but I uh, hope you learned something. And if you don't understand everything the first time around, that's totally fine. You can watch it again and again. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any further questions, you may join my Discord. I allow it. Um, in the next episode, we're going to take a bit of break from all this, a bit of break from this stuff, and we're going to learn how to create a user interface. So, until then, see ya, and creator out.